So in this final video on the circulation lecture, what we're going to be concluding on is the idea of the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system was the solution to the previous problem that we highlighted. And that problem was that when interstitial fluid, when any type of fluid that's surrounding the cells, that's not necessarily in the cells, just around the cells, is not going back into the capillaries, that fluid has to go somewhere. It can't just stay in the tissue. And that fluid is going to be pushed throughout the body and going throughout the body via the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system also has some sort of circulatory fluid in it. It's very much like a circulatory system, and we would consider the lymphatic system, therefore, an accessory to the circulatory system. This system has three main functions that we're going to highlight. The three functions are as follows. Number one, the job of the, of the lymphatic system is to both collect and return, collect and return ISF, that interstitial fluid that's lying around, that's not going back into the blood, to the blood. And that's our first step. There's about 15% of ISF that's just staying outside of the cells. That has to go back into the blood. And this is overall in an attempt to maintain fluid balance. This ensures that the body maintains a fluid balance. Because if you have a fluid imbalance, if you have all this extra fluid lying outside of your cells, this is going to cause all of your cells to push all of their solutes outside to make that fluid less hypotonic. And that's really, really bad. So we want to make sure that the balance is definitely there of fluid and the hypotonic, hypertonic relationships amongst the body are in sort of some sort of cohesion. Finally, uh, the other functions that we want to focus on are the fact that the lymphatic system is a bit uh, involved in digestion because it actually absorbs lipids, this is where lipids go to, from the digestive system, from the digestive tract specifically. And finally, the lymphatic system also functions in pathogen defense. We'll briefly talk a little bit more about this idea as we move forward. What we want to first look at in the lymphatic system, besides the functions, are a little bit in terms of its structure. What structures are within the lymphatic system, and what do they do in order to promote these three functions? The structures within the lymphatic system include lymph. Lymph will serve as the lymphatic system's fluid. Much like in the cardiovascular system, blood is the cardiovascular system's circulatory fluid. In addition to fluid, you always need something to carry the fluid in, and those would be lymph vessels, and those are found within the lymphatic system as well. Lymph vessels are going to be throughout the body. They're all over the body because they're our capillaries all over the body, and therefore there may be ISF all over the body near all these cells. So throughout the body, um, nearly, I would say, almost all tissue are going to be infiltrated by lymphatic vessels. Almost all tissues will be infiltrated. They will have a connection to not only a capillary, but also most likely a lymph vessel as well. And finally, another structure that's commonly heard of are lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are going to be structures made of connective tissue, so they're rough and durable structures with lots of white blood cells. So there's going to be lots of white blood cells, WBCs, embedded within this connective tissue lymph node area. Purpose of this is that when you're moving fluid via the lymph, when you're moving lymph via these vessels throughout the body, the body also has very specific lymph nodes throughout the body as well. And these areas, known as lymph nodes, are going to be where white blood cells will basically attack any fluid that may contain pathogens within it, any lymphatic fluid specifically. So we can broadly state that at this point of the lymph nodes, pathogens are going to be filtered out of the lymph. They may have been in the lymph, but now they're filtered out of the lymph. And once they're filtered out of the lymph, they will then be dealt with by the immune system. And we can just say that hopefully, and most of the time, they will be destroyed. They will be killed. So those pathogens are filtered out of lymph and killed. Those are the structures associated with the lymphatic system. Those are the functions. And now what we want to look at is a little bit more in terms of how the lymphatic system really, really works. So let's take a look. What we have is the following. Lymph is the fluid that's going throughout the body. Therefore, lymph will be moving. And lymph movement, just like blood movement, has to occur. There has to be some sort of pumping mechanism or some sort of push that allows lymph move 
to move throughout the body. Now, there is no heart, let's say, or central organ that causes lymph to push throughout the body and cause lymph pressure, let's say. Instead, lymph movement is actually due to what are known as rhythmic contractions. And these are specifically muscle contractions, rhythmic muscle contractions of the vessel walls. Now, how does this happen? How do we have vessel walls rhythmically contract in order to push lymph throughout the body? This is going to occur whenever you have skeletal muscles contract. Because skeletal muscles themselves will contain different blood vessels, they will contain different connections, and therefore, whenever lymph is moving, the skeletal muscles are going to be causing that lymph to sort of push through as well. With skeletal muscle movement essentially comes lymph movement. They're simultaneous and therefore we get fluid movement as a whole. So it's very important to recognize that lymph cannot move throughout the body unless the body is active, unless the body is actively moving. Skeletal muscles must be contracting therefore. Now, in terms of the lymphatic system and how it's arranged or oriented to, throughout the body, what we would term is that there are lymphatics. This is another term here. There are lymphatics all over the body. These are found all over the body. And the purpose is the following. When you have lymphatics all over the body, they're all going to converge eventually and reach a sort of destination. They're going to conduct, they're going to conduct the lymph toward one central region, and that is the neck. This is an attempt to satisfy this function right here. Collect and return ISF to the blood. Put the fluid back into the blood. Now, why is this going to happen or how? Well, lymphatics throughout the body will conduct the lymph toward the central region of the neck. And at the neck region, you're going to join back with the circulatory system via lymph ducts. So this is where we have a mixing at this neck region, central neck where lymph ducts will allow lymph to mix with blood to create a more uh, cohesive mixture of fluid. This overall ensures that there's going to be a one-way flow. It's very, very clear that the lymphatics follow, much like the blood, a one-way flow of direction from the tissues originally, that's where about 15% is located. The tissues are then going to allow this ISF to form into lymph and go on to lymph vessels and from the lymph vessels and this lymph area reach the circulatory system, never the other way around. Overall, the lymphatics are going to ensure that these steps are taken in this one-way unidirectional format. Finally, the last thing we want to mention about the lymphatic system is in regards to dysfunction of this system. This function of the lymphatic system directly usually results in edema. Edema is simply going to be a lymphatic injury. Many people have actually experienced this before because edema is just another way to say swelling. Anytime you have swelling of the body, wherever it may be, this is due to some sort of lymph structure being damaged. So swelling is going to occur because due to ISF, that fluid. Remember how I said it's very important to put that fluid where it belongs and not let it stay in a certain area for too long next to the tissue? If it stays or accumulates too much in one area, you're going to get swelling because of ISF accumulation. Now, why is the ISF accumulating? Why is it swelling? Why is it staying in one spot and not going throughout the lymphatics throughout the body? This is because of the following reason. The fluid itself, and this is the ISF, this builds up in tissues, and because of this buildup within tissues, you're going to, this is directly in a result or due to vessels, specifically lymphatic vessels, not taking, lymphatic vessels not taking it to the correct place where it needs to get to. ISF needs to get to the lymphatics. The vessels themselves are not doing that, not taking it to the lymphatics and therefore not going back to the circulatory system. This is the purpose of the lymphatic system, to aid the circulatory system, to be an accessory to the circulatory system. This is thrown off when you have some sort of lymphatic injury. Of course, the reason why these vessels are not taking it back to the lymphatics is because this is due to overall a lymph 
vessel blockage or injury of some sort. So let's say you sprain your ankle. When you sprain your ankle, yes, it hurts, and yes, you get swelling, but the swelling is directly due to you not only injuring the ankle structures themselves, the muscles associated with it, the ligaments associated with it, but the lymph vessels that provide and take away lymph from your ankle will also be damaged. And if they're damaged, they're not putting lymph back into the lymphatics, into the circulatory system. And if they're not doing that, you eventually get edema. You get swelling of an area. And this is, again, due to lymphatic injury. So swelling is definitely an accumulation of this fluid. That's why you see a large, you know, uh, the, the ankle itself swells. It opens up, becomes larger. And this is all due to ISF accumulating. That covers the circulatory system. Hopefully through this, you've gained a greater appreciation for the complexities associated with the system. Again, the main idea here is that we want a unidirectional flow of blood. We want to make sure blood flows to the right place at the right time, at the right rate, within the right vessel, and that covers our look at circulation.